uh, tonight. Um, if you have your Bibles, as we prepare our minds to be strengthened, to be encouraged uh, through the songs that we're going to sing, through the prayers that we're, we're going to uh, pray together, uh, through a message from God's Word that, that's going to be delivered, I want you to turn over in your Bibles to the 95th Psalm, please. We're going to start here tonight just by way of preparation in just a moment. Uh, Brother Bruce Hart is going to lead us um, in our singing tonight. His first song is number 562. Uh, we'll have the songs uh, displayed if you're on here. If you're calling in, number 562 uh, will be our first song. Um, after that, or, or before that, um, Brother Pat McPhillips is going to lead us in our opening prayer, and then Brother Ray Bronger is going to lead us in, in our closing prayer. So Psalm 95, let's begin at stanza one, please. Psalm 95, beginning at stanza one. O come, let us sing for the joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods, in whose hand are the depths of the earth. The peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for it was he who made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. Today, if you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah and in the days of mass in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me, they tried me, though they had seen my work. For 40 years, I, I loathed that generation and said they are a people who err in their heart and they do not know my ways. Therefore, I swore in my anger, truly, they shall not enter into my rest. Brother Pat, if you will, lead us in that opening prayer and then Brother Bruce, lead us in our first song, please. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this opportunity tonight to come together to study a portion of your word and to, to worship you as like-minded Christians. Father, we pray that you please give us some, a clear mind, clear our minds of worldly thoughts and distractions in our homes. We're not able to, to gather in person. Father, we pray for the shut-ins and the sick of our congregation, as we know there are several, and that if it be your will that you re return a portion of you their health or, or full recovery so that they can be back with us. Father, we pray for the rest of the world at this time, that there, that there may be peace during this time of uncertainty, because we know that all good things come from you, Father. We ask all these, and Father, we ask that you please forgive us for our sins so we can have a clean soul going into this, to this time of worship for you, Father. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Number 562. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne make all my wants and wishes known. In seasons of distress and grief, my soul has often found relief and oft escaped the tempter's snare by thy return, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, the joy I feel, the bliss I share of those whose ache your spirits burn with strong desires for thy return. With such a hasten to the place where God my Savior shows his face and gladly take my station there and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, 
Thy wing shall my petition bear to him whose truth and faithfulness engage the waiting soul to bless. And since he bids me seek his face, believe his word and trust his grace. I'll cast on him my every care and wait for thee, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of prayer, may I thy consolation share till from Mount Pisgah's lofty height I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting prize. And shall, while passing through the air, farewell, farewell, sweet art of prayer. If you have your songbooks and you want to mark it, our song of invitation or after the lesson will be number 660. Number 660. Our song now, though, will be number 680. Oh, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy, Never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor daily unconstrained to be. Let thy goodness like a fetter Bind my wandering heart to thee. Never let me wander from thee. Never leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Oh, that day when freed from sinning, I shall see thy lovely face. Then adorned in blood-washed linen, how I'll sing thy sovereign grace. Come, my Lord, no longer tarry. Take my ransom soul away send thy angels now to carry me to realms of endless day if you still got your bibles open i want you to turn with me tonight to luke chapter 15 i want to return uh to where we left off uh this past uh, lord's day you know, this past Lord's Day, we, we spent some time really looking at three different parables that, that dealt with that which was lost 
uh, but was found. And, and certainly our emphasis was on that third parable where, where Jesus told us about a father with two sons. And the younger of the sons, he decided he had enough of life at home and he demanded his inheritance now. And he takes that inheritance and he goes off into a foreign land and he squanders it in no time. His decisions, if you remember, they left him in a really desperate and rock bottom situation. A Jewish boy literally in the pig pen with nothing to eat and nobody cared. To his credit, as we read, the prodigal son, he comes to himself. He realizes the error of his ways and he returns home to his father. I want to begin reading tonight at verse 17. Luke chapter 15, look at verse 17. It says, But when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough bread, but I'm dying here with hunger. I will get up and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer to be worthy to be called your son. Make me as one of your hired men. So he got up and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring the fattened calf, kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate, Jesus says. Jesus here for us paints a beautiful picture of our heavenly father. A contrite and repentant heart that of the prodigal son, met with enthusiastic mercy. And Jesus pictures our Heavenly Father running to meet us, putting the best robe on him, putting a ring on his hand, putting new sandals on his feet. He kills the fattened calf to eat and to celebrate. Why? Well, read verse 24 again. For this son of mine was dead, Jesus says, and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. And they began to celebrate. The father says, the son of mine, he was dead, but he's come to life again. You know, brother, that's every single one of us. We've all gone the way of the prodigal. And we've all returned back to the father. And we've been met with open, with open arms. You know, I go back to the earlier parables, and I, I think about their purpose here in this chapter, and I think about their conclusion. You think about Luke chapter 15 at verse 7, where he says, I tell you that in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Luke 15 at verse 10 says, in the same way I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents repentance, one soul. It leads to joy in heaven. And our father is so joyful when one of his children returns to him. You know, these parables, especially this, this third parable here in Luke chapter 15, brethren, it ought to warm our hearts. As we recognize who we were, as we recognize who we are, it ought to warm our hearts. Now, the focus I really think of this parable begins really in verse 25, because there's an older brother whom we haven't met yet. And let's just say his reaction to all of this, well, I'll let you decide. I want you to look at verse 25 starting. It says, now his older son, when all of this is taking place, this, this warm embrace, his older son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He summoned one of the servants and began inquiring what these things could be. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. Verse 28 says, but he became angry and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. Let's stop right there. He's angry. He won't go in. His father's begging him, come in, your, your brother has returned. This is good. This is calls for rejoicing. Why won't you come in, right? What could be the problem? Well, look at verse 29. But he answered and said to his father, look, for so many years I've been serving you and I've, I've never 
neglected a command of yours. And yet you've never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when, his son, when the son of yours came, who has devoured your wealth with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. Oh. In other words, Father, he, he doesn't deserve this. Let me ask you, right or wrong, did he deserve this? You know, he's right. This son didn't deserve this. He deserved the pig pen after all that he had done. Listen, this older boy's years of service, they were to be applauded. But, but I got to tell you something, and I, we've all read this account a, a number of times, studied this parable uh, many times. And I realize it, it's a parable, and I realize Jesus is telling this parable. But, you know, every time I read this, I get hung up on that phrase where the older brother says, I have never neglected a command of yours. You can almost hear the Pharisees saying something like that, right? You know, his father doesn't, doesn't call him on it because I, at this point, I suspect it doesn't really matter. He just, he wants his son to come in and celebrate that his older brother has returned. But I don't believe that. And obviously this is representative of the Pharisees. I don't believe that this older son had never not, not neglected a command of his father. I believe that's how he saw himself. I believe he saw himself as deserving of everything that his father was doing for his brother. Verse 31 speaks loudly to me. To, to hear him tell it, it sounds like his father had never done anything for him. But his father says, son, you've always been with me, and, and all that is mine is yours. Here's the thing. The older brother, he was blessed, no doubt. But he didn't see it that way. He didn't see himself as getting what he deserved. The parable ends in verse 32 by saying, but we had to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours was dead and has begun to live and was lost and has been found. As I've said, this older brother is obviously representative of the audience that Jesus is speaking to here, these Pharisees. And for those of you who've been participating in our daily Bible reading, we've been reading about these guys and we've been observing this hypocritical and pretentious and, and self-righteous attitude. And that's exactly the way this older brother is. He's self-righteous. He has a lack of respect for his father. He lacks empathy and compassion for his brother. And I believe he's delusional. There's three problems here that, that, that just jump off the page to me. And these are problems that we are susceptible to as well, bro, brother. Number one. Number one, the older brother doesn't see his father as he should. That's number one. Number two, he doesn't see his brother as he should. And then number three, he doesn't see himself as he should. You know, it's interesting. While all of those problems, I guess you could argue, are separate problems, I would argue that they're all intertwined. And they all go and they all work together. And I truly believe, I've been thinking about this all week, I truly believe that all of these problems are predicated on the last one, the way he viewed himself. You, you know, in Jesus' famous mountain sermon, his most comprehensive message that we have recorded for us, Jesus could have began that sermon with the nature of God. He could have talked about God, but instead, he started with the way one ultimately views themselves. Turn over for just a moment. We're not going to stay here long, but turn over for just a moment to that beatitude section of Matthew chapter 5. I want to come back to this and, and, and listen to Jesus as he begins this most comprehensive sermon. In Matthew chapter 5, look at verse 1. Matthew 5 at verse 1, it says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and began to teach them, saying, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit, who's that? 
The poor in spirit is the one that recognizes their spiritual bankruptcy. They're spiritual beggars in desperate need of mercy, in desperate need of forgiveness, and they recognize it. They recognize that they're sinners. They recognize what they've done and, and, and what their sin has done by way of separating them from God. And they understand that in that state, they will be lost for all eternity. And so they're desperate. They're desperately craving mercy and grace and forgiveness. And Jesus says, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven apart from that perspective when it comes to yourself. It's that perspective that causes a person to recognize their dependence on their Father, His mercy, and His grace. It's that perspective that allows a person, listen to this, it allows a person to empathize with his fellow man because it's this person, the person who's poor in spirit, he recognizes, I'm no better, regardless of what that person's done. I'm no better because I'm a sinner just like you. With this older brother, where's the empathy? Where's the compassion? Both sinners in desperate need of God's mercy. You know, this, other, this older brother, obviously, representative of the Pharisees. You know, in just a couple of chapters over in Luke chapter 18, in, in describing this same group of self-righteous, pretentious, hypocritical Pharisees. Jesus teaches again. So turn over there to Luke chapter 18, another familiar passage, but let's take this in and let's examine ourselves. In Luke chapter 18 at verse 9, listen to what Jesus says. The Bible says, and he also told this parable to some people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, and the other a tax collector, a dreaded tax collector. And the Pharisee, verse 11, stood up and was praying to himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, swindlers, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Uh, listen, God, I fast twice a week, verse 12. I pay tithes of, of all that I get. But the tax collector, verse 13, standing some distance away, was even unwilling to lift up his eyes to heaven, but was beating his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. Listen to Jesus' conclusion in verse 14. I tell you, this man went to his house justified rather than the other. Here's the takeaway. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble. But he who humbles himself will be exalted. Let me ask you, with whom do you most identify with, brethren? Which of these two men right here do you most identify with? For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, Jesus says, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Number one, how do you view yourself? Number two, how do you view your God? And number three, how do you view others? Brethren, may we never be like these Pharisees. May we never be like this older brother. May our lives never reflect this self-righteous, pretentious, hypocritical attitude that defined these so-called leaders. Let's be humble. That humility will lead to dependence and gratitude for our Heavenly Father. That humility will lead to empathy and patience and compassion for our brothers and sisters in Christ, for our fellow man. You know, these things are lacking in our world today. And sometimes they're lacking even in the kingdom of God. And if we want to make it real personal, sometimes for me, it's lacking in my own home. And I need to do better. I'm a sinner, and I'm in desperate need of God's grace. The same as the people that we work with, that our kids play ball with, we're no better than them. And may we always remember that apart from God, 
apart from his love, apart from his mercy, apart from his grace, rather than we would have nothing. Thank God for his grace and his love and his mercy. Listen, if you're on here tonight and you're not a child of God, let me tell you about your creator, your heavenly father. He loves you. And he loves me as well. And here's how I know it. Because in the most demonstrative way imaginable, he sent his son to this earth to die on the cross for our sins. He has proven over and over and over, not just through our spiritual blessings, but through our daily physical provisions, that he loves us and he cares for us. It seems most reasonable to me that we would want to reciprocate that love. And the way that we do that is through submission and obedience. Yes, we are saved by grace. Apart from that grace, we cannot stand. Apart from that grace, we have no hope of heaven. But his grace is a call to action. It's an instructive force. And we must respond to his grace on his terms. Let me ask you tonight. Because it's very possible that we have those who are either in this Zoom meeting right now or who will listen to this later, and you know your life is not right with God because you've never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I would urge you to look around. Look at the world. Is it working? Is man's way working? Do you see this earth in its current existence? Do you see stability? Because I don't. God offers you a peace, a happiness that transcends all of this nonsense, the ups and downs of life, a peace that passes the understanding, as Paul would say. Don't you want that? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? I think there may be some on here tonight or who will listen later who believe that. Why don't you act on that belief? Why don't you repent of your sins? You know you're going in the wrong direction. Would you confess him as the Son of God because he is? And would you be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins? I beg of you, call me tonight. Call one of the elders. Make your life right tonight. And maybe you're on here tonight. And you know what? Some of the things we've talked about, maybe you've allowed some of this, this self-righteousness and Maybe, maybe there's some things in your life that, well, if you're honest with you, it's just hypocritical. You're professing one thing, but you're doing another. I urge you, make it right tonight. Make your life right tonight. Brother Bruce is going to lead us in a song. It's intended to give us a few minutes to consider where we stand before God. That's every single one of us. When we get done with that song, if you need the prayers of the brethren, make it known. If not, if it's something of a, a private nature, get on your knees and go to God and ask him for forgiveness. Thank you for, for listening tonight. And I pray if you're not right with God that you'll make it right this very night. Brother Bruce, would you lead us in our song, please? Number 660. <clears throat> Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go, anywhere he leads me in this world below, anywhere without him dearest joys would fade, anywhere with Jesus I am not afraid, anywhere, anywhere fear I cannot know, anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus, I am not alone. Other friends may fail me, he is still my own. Though his hand may lead me over drearest ways, anywhere with Jesus is a house of praise. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. 
Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus over land and sea, telling souls in darkness of salvation free. Ready as he summons me to go or stay, anywhere with Jesus when he points the way. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus I can go to sleep. When the darkening shadows round about me creep, knowing I shall wake and never more to roam, anywhere with Jesus will be home, sweet home. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. As always, thank you so much for, for being a part of this tonight. I, I, I know it provides me a lot of encouragement to get to see uh, your faces and know that your Bibles are open and, and know that you're singing as, as we're singing at, at my house. And just to be reminded that this is what's most important and that we're not alone in this, but we've got brothers and sisters in Christ who are striving to be right with God just as, as we are. And I am just, I'm so thankful for you. Appreciate Brother Bruce and leading us in our singing tonight. Appreciate Brother Pat and, and his prayer as well. Brethren, let's be mindful of those who, um, those who have struggled recently with their health and some have gotten better. We certainly always want to be prayerful of our sister Marion Fentress. Um, it's good to see Sister Louise. Um, she was with us on Sunday. It's good to see her on here tonight. Remember our sister Janice Brown. She's a new member. Uh, to us and Janice has a lot of ongoing health problems but I know that I talked to her last week and I know how much she appreciates um, our prayers. We haven't mentioned this um, for a little bit but continue to remember uh, Sister Ann Sullivan's son Eric and his family as, as they were hit by the hurricane um, in Alabama as they're recovering from that. Um, let's be mindful of, of Sister Ellie and the entire Geyser family and um, I know you're prayerful in regards to that. So many of you have reached out and have been prayerful in regards to my grandmother She's had a really good week. The hospice nurses are, are so surprised at how well um, she's doing. She's coherent. She's talking. She's feeling even a little better. I, I don't know what all of that means, um, but she told me to tell you all to thank you um, for all the prayers. Continue to remember the Weedman family with Betty's mother and her Aunt Dorothy, um, who has a lot of health problems. Um, and certainly, let's be mindful um, of our elders um, as they're continuing to um, lead us in the best way possible in a really uh, strange and, and just trying time. Let's remember our kids as they're no doubt affected by all of this. They're troopers, I'm telling you. We had a middle school class tonight and they were on great behavior. And Brother Jesse Jones led a beautiful prayer at the start of the kids singing and the kids singing was just energetic and the kids were paying attention. And even when we sang a couple of adult songs, they were doing their best to pay attention. And I know how hard that is and I'm, I'm just so proud of them. And it certainly speaks to, to our parents and let's remember all of our um, school teachers, many of whom in Bullitt County, at least, who've gone back to school. Um, that's a really trying situation, a tough situation, as you can imagine. And certainly some of those who are still online, let's remember um, them as well. Let's be prayerful for our country. Um, let's be prayerful um, for our leaders. Um, and I have to tell you, I'm looking forward to this Lord's Day when we come together and assemble. Um, a reminder, if you hadn't heard this already, I think we, we got the word out to nearly everybody. Um, this Sunday, originally we had said 11, but we've moved that to 1030 um, Sunday morning so everybody can be there uh, to worship. Um, I'll tell you, um, I've seen this before. The forecast doesn't look great, and here's why I'm telling you that. If for some reason some of you have to be in your cars, it, it might be um, make sure that you have um, that Zoom number, number written down for you. Um, hopefully we won't need it, but if for some reason you had to get to your cars and for some reason we couldn't roll the windows down even a little, um, it, you may need that. So just keep that in mind. But um, the forecast has been rainy before at this point. It ends up being really nice. So, so we'll see what happens. Regardless, we're going to come together. Regardless, we're going to worship and praise our God. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together. We're going to sing praises to his name. We're going to pray together. 
Um, and we're going to do our very best. And I know that God's going to be pleased um, with that. So be looking forward to that. Invite as many people as you can. Um, Brother uh, Bill texted me this morning early and he had had a conversation with, with someone in, a, in the neighborhood. And how about this? They've been listening to our service and Bill thinks they just might come this Lord's day. How cool is that? Um, so let's be prayerful, man. I tell you what, if somebody from the neighborhood, if, if they heard us and we were able to teach them and they come and they hear the gospel proclaimed, I don't know about you, but all that we've done, it'll all be worth it. Right? So let's pray. Um, let, let's pray that, that some fruit comes from that. Um, I'll try to get some more information from Bill in regards to that, but it's so good to see you. So thankful that, that you're willing to try. We love you and just can't wait to be with you. Um, Sunday morning. If you need something, let me know. Let one of the elders know. Let one of our deacons know. Let anybody know. We, we, we want to meet that need if we can. And we certainly don't want anybody to go without right now. So if you need something, please, please uh, let us know. So good to see you. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Ray Bronger, one of our deacons, if he would, to, to lead us in our closing prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. Let us pray. Dear great God and Father in heaven, Father, we come to you at the close of this hour, thanking you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us daily. Father, no blessing any greater than the, your son and our savior, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth and lived, showed us the way that we can be sin free and do what it takes to have a home in heaven with thee. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us each and every day. We thank you for this avenue that we have this evening to gather together around and study another portion of your word, sing songs, and pray upon to you. Father, we pray at this time. We know that there are people who are shut in in our congregation and don't have the ability to get out and, and be around us. Father, we pray that you be with them and be with their caretakers, that they know that we love them and we think about them and we pray for them and we hope that you comfort them in only ways that you can. Father, we're also mindful of those who are in the final stages of their life, both Ms. Ernst Spiker and Ms. Pfeiffer, that you be with them and continue to comfort them as only you can. We also ask that you be with their families, that they have that lasting comfort of knowing that, that Two children of yours are about to gain their crown and have a home in heaven with thee. Father, we thank you for this lesson this evening that we've got to study and, and learn about your grace and, and your forgiveness and, and how you will take us back no matter how vile we might be, that you will welcome us with open arms if we only repent and, and ask for forgiveness. Father, we also need to remember this lesson that we not be that person who boasts and shows how mighty we are in the Lord's church, that we just be that humble servant of yours that you ask us to be. Father, we ask that you continue to be with each and every one of us through these unusual circumstances that we have, that we continue to make ways to get together. We continue to follow the lead of our elders as they continue to come up with unique ideas and opportunities that we have the opportunity to study you in whatever way that might be. Father, we're thankful for the people of the neighborhood who have heard us and we continue to ask that our joyous sound go out to that neighborhood that they hear us singing and they hear the preaching and the praying and if, if only one person's ears sparked and their heart is pricked everything we've done will be worth it father we ask that you be with all those who are mentioned sick especially sister ellie and and be with them and be with the doctors that are ministering to her that that she continues to gain portions of her health that she can make a full recovery and be out with us soon. Be with Brandon as he is working his new job and trying to split time between all of the things that are pulling him each and every direction that he never loses faith and never loses hope. Father, thank you for grace. Thank you for hope. Thank you for everything. All these things we pray for in the name of your son and our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.